Today I'm going to show you how to clean a catalytic converter. Conventional wisdom says you can't clean a cat. I know, driving semi-trucks, we use the same kind of systems for the diesels, the catalytic converters, and the filters and all that. And I know you can, but there's a way that you have to do it. Truthfully, if it's shagged out that bad, you should probably get it replaced. But if you run a little low and you need to just clean it out of your car's burning a lot of oil, it might not be. It's, it's a cost-saving uh, it's a cost-saving device what I'm doing here, but it doesn't solve the problem. It just gets you a little further down the road. And this is something I learned uh, with semi-trucks, but uh, I got a pair of cats off my brother's Mustang. Uh, I was going to say, don't worry, it wasn't wrecked, but then I remembered he wrecked it because, well, it's a Mustang and that's what happens. So let me show you the catalytic converters and... Uh, what we're gonna need and we'll get to it right now truthfully I would have rather have used the catalytic converter off that car there but uh, I didn't feel like cutting it off but this one hit the ground that's why that shields there but it's not too dirty uh, you can you can see light through it and that's good but I know with the uh, one on that car it's been pushing a lot of oil through the catalytic converter and that right there causes performance issues because it does eventually end up clogging it so I need to clean it out and the oil is just from valve seals it's a 77 thing burns a bit of oil in fact I'm looking at the rear bumper here and I'm seeing it burns a lot of oil doesn't burn it more just drips it that's what they do so to start off we need a clean bucket big enough to put the catalytic converters in that bucket won't work. Ideally, you need a big a bucket so you can stand them straight up and down. And I'll show you why. Because in this instance, gravity is our friend. That first bucket wouldn't work, so we got a second bucket. Got a five gallon bucket here, so let's grab the catalytic converters. And uh, that's obviously the front side, so we're gonna put the front side down. We're gonna set it up right like that, and we'll do the same with the other one. Uh, hmm. There's equal damage. Apparently, my brother was. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's close side. All right. So they're upright. You can see them right there. So. And now you're going to need enough vinegar to fill it up. And we got five gallons here. You want distilled white vinegar, no apple cider, no nothing. We're not baking a cake or making salad dressing. We're not cooking. We, we need distilled because it's clean. And it's going to rinse clean. Mosquitoes. So, let's get these in. One down and four more to go. So, let's fill it up. We got them. Now we got them soaking. Several different ways to do this. You can actually... Uh, seal up the other end you know with some plastic bags and rubber and all that cap it off and then just hold them upright and fill them up that way that works too uh for demonstration purposes uh this is what i did um you get away with a gallon i mean but i've got maybe 12 and a half dollars in vinegar here so i'm not really worried about 12 and a half dollars when it comes to this so now we got to let it sit and let gravity do its thing. The reason uh, you make sure the flow side's facing down is because if you look at one of these under a microscope, what a catalytic converter is supposed to do is to trap particulates. The inlet side's bigger than the outlet side. So microscopically, it's, it closes up a little bit like that. And what you want is the particles to fall out the big end, not get jammed up trying to come out the other end. So, we're going to let gravity do its thing. I've got lunch on the stove, so we'll be back in a, an hour or two, and uh, we'll check it out. 
Oh boy, lunchtime. It's been a bit, so let's check on these things. Go over here. Grab this one. Wow, actually, this is noticeably cleaner. You can see a little bit of the particulates in the bottom, and that's why we put the gravity, like I said, because it floats out. So, let's put this one up to the light here. Hmm. Ah. It's kind of hard to see. I'm going to have to figure out something here. Well, hopefully you can see that. It's kind of... But, it is noticeably cleaner. So now, here comes the actually one of the most important steps. All that black stuff there is carbon that came out. We'll let it soak a little while longer. Uh, all of those stuff came out, but the other stuff will come out when we rinse it. And rinsing is actually the most important part, especially in my area of the country. You have to use distilled water. People would rather, people tell you, no, I just spray it out with a hose. Yeah, the hose will knock out the loose stuff. But the problem with uh, water out of the tap, especially where I live, is actually here in uh, southern Kansas, we have some of the hardest water in the country. It is full of minerals. You just spent all this time knocking minerals and contaminants off the innards of these, which is, you know, like the titanium and platinum and whatever else is in here. It's That's why they're so expensive. And then you're going to sit there and fill it up with tap water. And believe it or not, those minerals will reattach themselves to the metal. So you got to use distilled water. That's also why when we uh, put water into our radiators out uh, here that we you use distilled water too. That stuff just... It's got a whole lot more contaminants in it than you realize. If you put it in your engine, you want clean water. You're going to have less trouble down the road. I mean, if it's an old clunker, I can see filling up with a tap. But truthfully, for anything you really care about, use distilled. Also, you're going to have to find some way to properly dispose of five gallons of vinegar. Uh, don't throw it in the grass. It'll probably kill the grass. Well, you take a look at that. That's all out of the cats. So when you're dumping it, try not to spill it on your shoes like I did. You'll be like, Mom, do you ever feel not fresh? Well, you're going to smell like you are. All right. So you just basically rinse them out. And you can still even see there's still more stuff coming out of them. The reason we're doing it in the bucket is so I can show you how ignorant I am. Um, so we can show you what else comes out of it and we don't make a mess. But normally, you can just do this in the grass. But have it upright like this and you'll use less water. But make sure it's distilled. Now let's look at the final product. I just realized I have a light on this thing. Um, hopefully you can see that. But the inside looks really clean. So these are ready to be reinstalled if you were going to do that. Uh, but these are probably just going to either end up on the shelves or get recycled. I don't have any use for them. And you really can't do anything much with a used cat. But here's what came out of that. So probably another two gallons. Now. There's also one thing you need to consider. If your catalytic converter's cracked or you see a crack in it or chunks come out, there's no point um, in cleaning it. You're gonna need a new one. And you know, what you do from that point is completely on you. And uh, I'll have a little disclaimer here in a minute. But what you do after that, like I said, is on you. But if it's cracked or anything like that, as long as your catalytic converters are serviceable, cleaning them shouldn't be a thing. So that's just something to remember. If they're cracked or chunks have come out or, you know, it, they're rattly, don't even bother cleaning them. Just replace them. It's the only way you're going to find peace of mind with those. 
So we got 15 to 20 dollars in just the water and the vinegar and about three hours of your time. Is this a long-term fix? No. This will get you another 25 or 30 down the road, but truthfully, you know, you should probably change them. I know people are doing a lot of deleting, but I'm not, I, I don't really like that because it involves a complete retune of the engine and all that. And if you live in a state, well, actually, these are federally mandated, so in all 50 states, if you get caught with these removed, you can be ticketed. That's, so it, even though your state doesn't do emissions, theoretically, that removing these and straight piping is still technically illegal. But, this is an alternative. You got a clog cat, you can clean it. I recommend, though, uh, if you do this, put it back on the car as soon as you can, get it fired up, get all that water uh, cooked out of it, and that way no rust starts forming or anything like that. Water's still water, whether it's distilled or not. But that's just a little trick I learned. Uh, it's not a long-term fix, but if you're having some clawed cat problems and you're still waiting on payday and you need it to go, I'll get you down the road another, another few miles, but it's not a long-term fix. Small town life. It's noon. So, I appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Y'all have fun, and uh, we'll catch you later.